Hello, good morning. Welcome to this next, next lecture on contour integration. If you recall, last time we were doing the first example in contour integration, okay, and we left off right here. So, we have this integral dx over x square plus 1, which we are in interested in, we replace it with the integral on a closed contour, we call it j and the x is replaced with z, okay. but we make sure that the contour includes the leg or portion I want and there is this additional portion which is a semicircular arc integral. So, we have to evaluate this. Okay. So, what we now have is integral minus infinity to infinity dx over x square plus 1, this is the part I want, but additionally I acquire limit r tending to infinity integral over the semicircular arc dz over z square plus 1. Now, that should be equal to twice pi i times the residues of my function inside the closed contour. Okay. Now, this function of mine f of z is equal to 1 over z square plus 1. It has two singularities can be written as z plus i into z minus i. Okay. So, it becomes singular at plus minus i. So, if I now plot my contour, I have my singularities at i and minus i and my contour goes and closes from above closes from above and so it does include the singularity i. So, the right hand side will include the residue calculation. Okay. So, you must have seen residue calculations before, how do we calculate residue? we multiply the function f of z okay, by z minus i okay, and take the limit z tending to i. This is one of the ways we calculate, okay. it has gone off the screen. So, let me write it here, limit z tending to i z minus i into f of z. Okay. So, what is it in this case? Limit z tending to i z minus i into 1 over z plus i into z minus i. So, this goes with that and my residue is 1 over twice i. So, here I will get twice pi i times the residue which is 1 over twice i. Okay. So, twice i twice i that is equal to pi. Okay. So, what I now have here is j which is the closed contour integral is equal to the integral I want minus infinity to infinity dx over x square plus 1 okay. plus I have integral over a semicircular arc where the radius is going to infinity dz over 
z square plus 1 that is equal to pi. Okay. You can already see because the answer is actually pi and this integral is equal to pi the somehow this has to go to 0 we can already see that. Okay. Now let us because the first time we come up we have come across such an integral we will do it the traditional way. Okay. So, we are moving on a semi circular arc okay. we are moving on a semi circular arc now. Okay. So, let z be equal to r e to the power of i theta. Okay, r will tend to infinity, but let z be r equal to r e to the power i theta, which makes dz equal to r is a constant i e to the power of i theta d theta. Okay. Now, if I substitute it in this part of the integral, I get integral is going to be 0 to pi okay i am going this way 0 theta 0 theta equal to 0 to theta equal to pi okay and dz which is r i e to the power of i theta d theta divided by z square plus 1 which is r square e to the power twice i theta plus 1. Okay. Now, we have to find the value what happens to this as limit r tends to infinity. Okay. So, what we say is that the magnitude of this integral magnitude of this integral magnitude of this integral is less than or equal to the integral of the magnitude. The absolute value of this integral is less than equal to the integral of the absolute value integral of the absolute value which is i r e to the power of i theta d theta by r square e to the power twice i theta plus 1. Okay. This is a known result. Now, here the absolute value of e to the power i theta is 1, absolute value of i is 1. So, we do not have to worry about it. So, this ends up as I will write equal to limit r tending to infinity integral 0 to pi r d theta by r square e to the power of twice i theta plus 1. Now, here we use one of the several complex variable inequalities. Okay. One of the inequalities is if I have two complex numbers z1 and z2, okay, the absolute value of z1 plus z2 is greater than or equal to the absolute value of z1 minus the absolute value of z2. Okay. So, what is the idea here? I am going this absolute value is less than something. Okay. What I am going to do is I am going to further raise the value of this integrand such that it is definitely less than that value which means 
I will replace the denominator with something smaller. Okay. I have two complex numbers z1 and z2 and the absolute value in the denominator. So, what I am saying is that is greater than the absolute value of the difference of absolute values. Okay. And so, I am substituting this with something smaller in the denominator. So, the integrand is now bigger. So, what will I get? I will say strictly less than limit r tending to infinity integral 0 to pi okay, r is r d theta okay, divided by the magnitude of r square e to the power twice i theta is r square the magnitude of 1 is 1. So, I get minus 1 okay. and r is anyway positive number and theta is going between 0 to pi. So, this is equal to limit r r tending to infinity integral 0 to pi r d theta by r square r square minus 1. Now, r r square minus 1 they are independent of theta. So, they come out. So, I get r over r square minus 1 into pi with r tending to infinity r square in the denominator is bigger. So, this goes to 0. Okay. So, now in here in here the right side is pi in the left I have this portion which I want and this has been sent to 0. So, the answer is integral minus infinity to infinity dx or x square plus 1 is pi and this has been done using complex variables. Let us take a second example. It is very similar i is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity x square over x fourth plus 1 dx. Okay. This is very similar. So, I will not do the full blown derivation of this. So, as is standard now we will replace this with j which is a closed contour integral over some closed contour so to be chosen by me okay, and replace x with z. So, we have z square over z fourth plus 1 dz which is equal to. Now, again I must remember that the portion I want must be part of the contour. So, I have minus infinity to infinity x square over x fourth plus 1 plus an integral over some other contour okay. z square over z square z fourth plus 1 dz. I have not yet given you the contour. So, here it is, it is a very same contour. Okay. I am going from minus infinity to plus infinity okay, plus infinity and then I go the same way again in the upper part a semicircular arc ok 
okay except that now my function in the denominator function in the denominator is z to the power fourth plus one okay now z to the power fourth plus one goes to zero in how many places okay so i need the roots of z to the power fourth is equal to minus one okay so this has four roots z 1 2 3 4 given by e to the power i pi by 4 e to the power i 3 pi by 4 e to the power of minus i pi by 4 and e to the power of minus thrice i pi by 4 okay so we have poles here 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 and here we have four poles so it's a fourth order so now within within the contour i have two poles two singularities so i have to compute two residues so this is equal to twice pi i times residues of f of z okay computed at z is equal to e to the power of i pi by 4 and e to the power of twice i pi by 4. Okay. So, what we now have let me write it here j is equal to integral of the portion I want minus infinity to infinity x square by x fourth plus 1 plus integral over a circular arc where the radius is going to infinity z to the power 2 dz by z fourth plus 1 and that is equal to twice pi i times the residue of f of z computed at z equal to e to the power i pi by 4 and e to the power i 3 pi by 4. Okay. Now here we will use a certain theorem okay, which says that if we have if we have an integral over a circular arc okay, of a function which is the ratio of two polynomials p of z and q of z okay, okay, and the radius of the arc goes to infinity further if the degree of the denominator polynomial q z is at least greater than or equal to by 2 okay then the numerator polynomial degree of the denominator must be greater by the degree by must be greater than the degree of the numerator at least by 2 then this integral okay 
this integral here goes to 0. So, which is indeed the case over here. We have a polynomial in the denominator q of z, q of z which is z to the power fourth plus 1, it is a fourth order polynomial. And the numerator is p of z which is equal to z square, it is second order. Okay. So, the denominator exceeds the numerator by 2, so it satisfies the theorem and so the integral over the circular arc C r with limit r tending to infinity of that integral is 0. So, this is 0. Okay. And therefore, what we have here is integral minus infinity to infinity x square over x fourth plus 1 is equal to twice pi i times the residues of f of z. Okay. This is very simple enough now to compute the residues. So, I will let you do the calculation and I will give you the answer. The answer is this, it is pi by root 2, okay. it is pi by root 2. Anybody has a query, then I will solve it in one of the lectures. Next example, okay. the next example is a very classic example, we we'll call it example number 3. Okay. We all must have wondered what it would be to integrate sin x over x from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So, what we will do is we will integrate uh, so, what I have here is sin a x, okay. sin a x over x okay, from minus infinity to infinity d x. Okay. So, as I said we replace, so let me call this i, we replace this integral by j which is now a contour integral over a closed contour and we said most of the time the x is replaced by z, but occasionally we may take a better function. So, what we choose here is e to the power of i a z by z dz. Okay. Now, in this form which is actually a sink function okay, sin a x by x, there is no singularity at x equal to 0. Okay. If you use L'Hopital rule, limit x equal to 0 of this function, this will acquire a finite value, there is no problem with this function. Okay. However, when we choose this form, this form has a singularity at z equal to 0, okay. because this is actually equal to cos a z by z plus i sin a z by z. Okay. Again sin a z by z has no problem as z tends to 0, but this has a problem at z equal to 0, this one has a problem at z equal to 0. Okay. So, this function that we have chosen has a problem at z equal to 0. Okay. So, now let us see what is the contour we use. Okay. We use a contour 
that comes all the way from minus infinity okay along the real axis let okay along the real axis now at z equal to 0 we have a singularity so we circumvent the singularity we go around it with an semicircular arc having a radius epsilon we move forward to plus infinity and we close the contour using a semicircular arc in the upper half okay so that is the contour we have so how do we now break this up i have j which is equal to the integral over the closed contour which I call C and this I will give it the name C r e to the power i a z over z d z okay, is equal to now let me count the number of portions I have I have a straight line portion here I have a semicircular arc portion here, I have a straight line portion here and a semicircle here. I have four portions of four portions here. Okay. So now what do I do? I write them down, I have minus infinity up till minus epsilon. Okay, this point is minus epsilon e to the power of i a z by z d z plus the integral on the semicircular arc c epsilon okay e to the power of i a z over z d z plus now integral from epsilon from epsilon to infinity e to the power of i a z over z z dz plus the semicircular arc portion c r with r tending to infinity so let me just say that the portion here and the portion here they constitute the integral in the sense of cauchy principle value because both the limits you have a singularity and both limits are epsilon so we will send epsilon to 0 and both the limits on either side are epsilon so this integral is in the cauchy principle value sense okay we will continue with this example then in the next class so i i stop here thank you